it gives you something that looks a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. Good question, though. Thanks. So, uh, yeah. So that's one. I guess that's one drawback of Jason. If it gets all mashed together, it doesn't look very good. <laughs> um, so I've got about ten minutes. You can yeah. specify the, the name. Can you also specify the port as you're starting up here? Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but this is sort of the fault behavior. But there's an Elasticsearch config, and so you can tell it. Um, uh, you can tell what ports to listen oh, so on. Right. Uh, when it starts up, it reads that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. So it uses a YAML file. Yeah, so you can specify um, uh, node.rack has to do with um, uh, physical locality of nodes. So it's not nearly as advanced as something like Hadoop if you're familiar with that. But you can give uh, nodes certain, certain affinity for each other. So for example, you can put all of your primaries in one rack and all of your replicas in another rack and tell, tell Elasticsearch that information and then by default it will favor the nodes that are physically closest to it when it's doing you know doing searches and indexing so it can give you you know if you get into large clusters it can do that so uh, each cluster has a name as well um, and uh, so I can run two different nodes on one machine with a different cluster name and they won't connect together you say, I see you, you're the wrong cluster, I'm not getting together, right? Uh, so you could, you could use this, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you could tell nodes if, they, if you want them to be master, if you don't want them to be master. Uh, you can also tell a node if you want it to hold data or not. Um, so a node that doesn't have data um, is essentially acts as a routing node or, you know, a proxy node. As a matter of fact, if you're doing... Um, <coughs> Uh, if you're doing Java development with Elasticsearch, you can actually have uh, your Java application connect as an Elasticsearch node in the cluster, which is nice because now your application has all of the same routing information as any other node that's in the cluster, and so you can get better um, you get better performance out of that way. If you're doing the the, the REST interface uh, and you have a large number of nodes, and most times it's a two hop process where You'll connect to one node, and that node won't have your information, won't be able to complete the search. It will have to connect to another node to complete that, and so you get you get the two hops. Uh, so that's that could be an important thing if you're doing really high performance so stuff. Is there an API for that Java interface too? Yeah, there's a very nice there's a very nice Java API for doing all this stuff. Okay. Um, you could you could specify the you know there's a lot of stuff that you can do and specify ports that it connects to, ports that it publishes. Uh, which could be a, important in a cloud environment. So you can have your nodes connect on an internal IP that broadcasts an external IP uh, that connect to uh, recovery processes. Um, uh, this is some of the some of the uh, the ways that you can configure it to connect. Uh, Unicast. You can just give it a list of IP addresses and hosts, and it will try to connect. It doesn't have to connect to every node. It just has to be able to connect to the master node. From the master, it can find all other nodes. So essentially, you only have to put the master node in the list, and it'll do, it'll do the right thing. So, is there something around number of ins uh, one instance per core, or does it just try to use all the cores that are on the on the box it's running on? Uh, so, good question. So, it's basically the question is about having to do scalability in cores. Um, you could put one Elasticsearch process on a machine with many cores, and it will do a really good job. Okay. Uh, Elasticsearch by itself, and especially if you get into the Java API, is very distributed. <laughs> uh, so when you do uh, when you do uh, a call from the Java API, so um, you can specify that you want it to return the results immediately, or you can specify um, you can basically get an object back that you can use to wait for the results to come back. Another kind of fun thing is you can actually um, um, it, it has a multi-query ability, so you can actually pass in multiple queries at the same time, and it will, you know, it will do all the searches and give you back the results, give you back a set of, of, of search results that you can then parse, uh, which can be more efficient than just sending them in one by one. 
Um, so as far as uh, you know, a little bit of getting a little bit more on the big data side, the Hadoop integration. So Hadoop acts as a as a gateway storage mechanism. Um, there are load funk and, and store funk uh, uh, that are written out there if you guys are using uh, it from MapReduce. Um, so you can use Elasticsearch either as a gateway to pull data into your MapReduce process or as an output to, to put stuff into it, right? Um, of course, you have the Hadoop streaming inter interface where you can manually export data from Elasticsearch, put it into your Hadoop cluster, do your processing, and then whatever you want to do it from there. So a little bit more of Elasticsearch and big data is, you know, how, how is it interesting in, in, in a big data environment? Um, so one of the things is very good as an endpoint for process data. So MapReduce is great, Hadoop is great. Um, once you process the data, you've got to do something with it. <laughs> it's great if you can process it and set it up disk, it doesn't do anything, anybody, anybody any good. But it becomes a very good way to pre-process data and throw it into the search engine so that you can do faceting or searching or other kind of results that you want to get out of it. Um, so you can use, so, uh, you know, an aggregator for, for business intelligence or dashboard information. Uh, again, especially with, with rotating indexes. Uh, you can build really flexible dashboards that give you, you know, up-to-date information on hourly, daily, weekly, whatever, however you want to be able to aggregate the information. Um, the third one about using, so if you guys, have you guys ever done anything with collaborative filtering, uh, which is using machine learning, it basically says, okay, I'm gonna, I have a set of, of data and I'm going to compare every set in the data or every item in the data with every other piece of, of data in that set and I'm going to compare how close they are to each other, um, which is a great thing. It's how we basically say, you know, okay, this item looks like this item, so if user A bought this item, you know, we're going to suggest the, the second one because they may be interesting. Um, once you get past, you know, probably millions of data points, that's, it's, it can be an intractable problem, right? So what happens if you want to perform collaborative filtering on 100 million or a billion data points? Uh, it becomes very difficult to do. So one of the techniques that you can use that we use in, in the company that I work for is we actually loaded 400 million data points into Elasticsearch and then we formed a query that says, okay, give me the ones that look like this, right? So Elasticsearch reduced the set from you know, hundreds of millions of comparisons down to a handful. And then there was a, a, a more, uh, um, uh, the, the, other, you know, the, the other algorithm basically took that and uh, you know, did some refinements and, you know, on that reduced set of information. And then, of course, as a data storage engine in its own right, Elasticsearch works, uh, works really well about that. So, um, looks like i got to get out. We've, we're, we've got about a minute left. Um, so, just real quick, Elasticsearch is actually a project, an open source project that I started working on that basically takes and puts uh, a more database-oriented query front end in front of Elasticsearch to make it more accessible to sort of the general database or you know the general development population. Elasticsearch is great, but the API is search. If you don't understand search, it looks very foreign. Um, resources, and then our, of course, uh, our lovely. Uh, uh, companies up there that are sponsoring us that we appreciate. Um, don't have any time for questions, but I'll go next door in the master room uh, if you got into the experts room, if you guys have some more questions or want to talk about some more stuff. Um, okay, thanks, appreciate it.